fans of DX Engineering. It is Friday afternoon here in the Eastern Time Zone of the USA. It's 2100 Zulu on February 24th, 2023. This is the weekend special, and you never know what you're going to get. Um, I never know what we're going to get, and uh, which is what makes it so exciting and looking forward to the weekend. Today, we have a very special guest. It's Glenn W0GJ. Hello, Glenn. Hi, Tim. It's uh, always great to uh, have you on and talk to you. You're always doing something. Always got something going on. So what do you got going on, Glenn? Well, <clears throat> right now I'm getting ready to go to Sable. We're leaving for Sable Island uh, uh, in about three weeks. And uh, I have, uh, I would like to tell you about that later today. But um, this is my first de-expedition. I've been on a lot of de-expeditions, but this is the first de-expedition I'm going to do with one arm tied behind my back. You can kind of <laughs> see I have a... I had a rot major rotator cuff surgery here just a couple of weeks ago, and I'll be tied up like this through the end of Sable. So um, I'm going to do a de expedition with one arm tied behind my back. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure you're still going to be very, very effective. Um, why don't you uh, tell us what's going on? You, do you have some slides to show us? I have some slides to show. And if you want to put them on, um, we can do that. Um, let me know when you see them. I, I see them now. Well, this was uh, taken from a Eagle Cam nearby a couple of days ago and with the snowstorm that's gone through here. And that Eagle sure looks like he or she would have got some real estate down in Arizona this time of year, I think. But anyway, you can see how happy that Eagle looks. I hope we have better conditions on Sable. And this is probably the way the guys on Bouvet felt here last week. Um, and I'd like to show uh, some slides about Sable Island. We're going to be leaving uh, um, in just about three weeks uh, for this ND expedition. And the catalyst uh, was the um, St. Paul ND expedition in 2016. And um, this is St. Paul um, Island. And there's a short video here of just a few minutes I'd like to show. Hopefully it will come through okay. But this is um, this shows the equipment and some of the people um, that we're going to be using on Sable, but we're going to be in a house instead of the tents. So here we go for a few minutes. This actually is what I would consider the quintessential the expedition location. The CY9C base is on the site of an abandoned lighthouse on St. Paul Island. The island is about three miles long and 15 miles off the north tip of Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. It has a little history. We don't know. We think there's maybe over 350 wrecks, 150 years of the French. After that, the British, and then now the St. Lawrence Seaway. So everything in the Great Lakes has to come by here. It's actually the kind of location that we look for. It's uninhabited. It's isolated. Family feel. Italy Zulu 5, Canada Mike Lima 5-9. Our goal here is to make as many contacts around the world with ham radio operators. And that includes hams in Japan, New Zealand, Australia. We are about 120, 125 feet above the water here. And the antenna is just so effective. JAs are just starting to come through here on 17, maybe we'll get that opening, the 9, 10 o'clock opening that we had in 2016, I hope so. Stand, everyone else stop. It, it, Italy Kilo 2 is at Hotel Kilo Nancy, Hotel Kilo Nancy. That's the beauty of the FT8. It gets through, it gets through where, other, where other things can't. We're hitting rates of about 130 an hour. That's 130 contacts an hour. An hour yeah. We're basically on a rock surrounded by cliffs and water. So really the only practical way in and out of here for us is by a helicopter. It's an Airbus H120, five passengers driven by a 500 shaft horsepower jet engine.
Flying is really amazing, and I love the changing colors of the water. I love the exotic terrain. Nothing like a pizza delivery on an uninhabited island. Huh? How, about that? How about that service? Wow. It's just cool that we can talk to satellites. Victor Echo 9, Charlie Bravo. Hey, Dave, you're, uh, you're Fox Nancy 97. These satellites, the ones we use, are low, low Earth orbiting, which means they're constantly going around the Earth. And there's only a, so big of a footprint, so when they pass, they you know, only certain areas lit up at the same time. So what you do is take it something like this, just an antenna rotor and an antenna, and then when the satellite comes overhead, it tracks the antenna. And while it's tracking, you talk to the guys on the other side. What we have right here is the uh, two meter and six meter stations. So over here we have six meters. We're running FT8 right now terrestrially, um, just working EA8, 100 watts. Over here we have uh, two meters. We're doing moon bounce right now. We got our azim uh, azimuth and elevation rotator here for the uh, moon array. And if you look here, you'll see these are all the signals coming off the moon right now. We're decoding off the moon all these signals here in the pan adapter. Uh, so we've worked on the moon this morning, so the moon's only been up for maybe half hour. We're CT1, HZE, RX1AS, ZS1LS. For non-ham people, what country? So uh, that's um, uh, uh, Portugal, Russia, and South Africa in two meters. All off the moon. All off the moon. We need to, uh, I told you we need to check TM fairly early on. I like the challenge. And just working with the team, you know, the camaraderie with the yeah. team members. Go after the 2019 expedition, St. Paul's Island. Weather has been well, everybody's been good, and the ghosts, I don't think. I haven't been here, but I'm pretty sure nobody's been haunted. A little static on the radio, maybe. Chase the FTA guys off. That's what it is. It's good. <laughs> How is that for a sense? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Uh... Just a fantastic team. Thanks again. That was fun. Awesome. Well, we hope to uh, at least do something similar to that when we're on Sable. And at the end of that expedition, Murray, uh, WA4DAN, our leader, uh, wanted to get a permit for Sable. And it took quite a while and didn't get any, he didn't, didn't have any success. And finally, we got success um, uh, just a short year ago. And um, several of the members of that expedition we just saw were, wanted to go to Sable. And we're the, the I'll say, the seed team for uh, um, for, for the expedition. And we added several members in the following weeks and some just recently. We used a little bit of persuasion for some people to join us, but we ended up with a nice team. Here's our team. There's eight of us. There's a J, K4ZLE, Craig, K9CT, Murray, WA4DAN, Lou, N2TU, Lee, WW2DX, Dan, 
W4DKS, and John, W2GD, and myself. So that's our team. So I think we have a pretty good team of operators. Well, seven and a half anyway, um, counting me. And it took seven years. This reminds me of uh, Navassa and uh, Dessa Cheo, uh, because it used to be easy to get to Sable. You'd just say, can we go? And they'd say, yes. And um, you'll see in just a minute that there's a number of the expeditions that occurred almost yearly. But then Environment Canada um, gave up operation of the island to the National Park Preserve uh, system. And so just like working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, it was we had to start all over again to build some relationships with the personnel. They didn't know what ham radio was, and they didn't know why it was important for ham radio. And initially, there were no overnight stays um, were permitted at all. And we asked for 10 operators, but they said, no, we can't handle that many. But in the long run, they've been very, very cooperative and, and very helpful working us uh, into their schedule. In fact, last fall, we were planning on going last fall several times, um, but with a, it would have been with a two-week notice, and not everybody could, could handle that. So um, they gave us, they said we could confirm our dates from March 20th to the 28th of this year. And then just a few days ago, we got extended to the 30th. So we have 10 days to be there. And you can see the past activity. It was pretty regular until 2016 when uh, Parks Canada took over. And you can see there were expeditions nearly every year. Um, some, with, some were one day stays and, and some were longer, but uh, there hasn't been any activity for uh, several years on 160, 30, 20 and 12, uh, 10 and 12, and there's never been any FT8 or 60 meter operation from uh, Sable. And right now, overall, it's ranked number 49. But as you can see in Asia, um, it's really highly wanted, particularly in the data modes. And same with uh, Oceania. In Eastern Europe, it's really surprisingly high on the most wanted list too. Sable is about 120 miles east of Halifax in the North Atlantic. It's called the Graveyard of the Atlantic. It's a big sandbar about 25 miles long and not quite a mile wide. And you can see where our, our operation is going to be. It's toward the, the southern and the western end of the island. We get there with an airplane and a helicopter. We've contracted these two birds to fly. And you can see we're severely restricted with our weight allowance. So you can imagine eight guys in their personal gear uh, doesn't leave that much room for uh, antennas and radios, but uh, we're all trying to lose weight. We're packing lightly as we can. There's laundry facilities there, so we only have to take a change of clothes, so we don't have to take a lot of stuff with us. So um, you can see our transportation, and this is where the airplane lands on the on the beach. And if the surf has been up or it's been raining a lot, uh, sometimes it'll be days before the airplane can go out. And if that's the case, we'll probably make two trips with the helicopter, even though it's pricier. So here's the, the airplane uh, coming in for a landing. This is the facility where we're going to be operating. We're going to be in this guest house right here in the middle. This is going to be our operational headquarters. And we'll put up antennas all around the house. Here's the house the way it was uh, in 2016. It's nice. Um, and I'll show you some pictures inside. The daily usage fee for us is $300 Canadian, which is about $240 US. Um, so that's our daily usage fee for uh, staying there. Inside, it's pretty nice. You can see there's a kitchen. There's a nice big living room, dining room. Uh, and upstairs, there's a room for radio. And that's just a separate room from the bedrooms upstairs. And there's a nice uh, sunroom or day room where we can watch the weather. And just a couple hours ago, I looked at the webcam on Sable. And if you were sitting in this sun room, this is what you would see looking out. Um, it's snowy. It's below freezing. It's windy. Um, and this is a couple hours ago, too, the, the wind on Sable. You can see the Sable Island there, that's crescent-shaped sandbar uh, just east of uh, Nova Scotia. And this is the weather today. And tomorrow and the rest of the week, you can see that it's going to be cold and windy. You can see, you know, today, wind up to 48 miles an hour. Same thing here later in the week. You know, it's going to be pretty windy. What does that remind you of? Bouvet. This is 
today's weather and for the rest of the week on Bouvet. It's actually going to be warmer on Bouvet in the next couple of days. Um, and the winds are about the same. So it's not going to be any different <laughs> from Bouvet, except we have a nice house to stay in, assuming we can get there. And, you know, this is an antenna that was there for one day expedition. It, it actually broke in the wind, but it can be pretty windy there. And we're going to be on all bands, 6 to 160, uh, all modes. And uh, again, you know, we might be a day delayed getting out. We might be a delayed getting off. Who knows? We might have to leave a day or two early if there's a big storm system coming in or something. But we're going to try and be as active as we possibly can be for, you know, 24 hours a day with as many stations as we can man. We have uh, ICOM 7300s for A. And we have uh, a bunch of K3s and KPA 500s for the other bands. We have verticals for the low bands, Yagi's for the high bands, and we have some uh, dipoles, as you can see. And we're going to do some EME on two meters and also uh, uh, try and get some six meter in. It's a little early before the E season, but we might be able to work some of the, um, the East Coast and maybe into Europe. We'll just have to see. We're going to be split most of the time, uh, and we're going to dedicate time for the general bands. Uh, and uh, our, the propagation windows, as you'll see in the next slide, are really quite narrow to Asia and Oceania. And we're really going to make an effort to concentrate on them because they're most wanted, uh, the most wanted uh, in that area. And we will be with Fox Hound on FT8. We're not going to have MSHB, so we will be Fox and Hound. And again, we're going to do some satellite and EME work. And this is what the boa cap predicts for Asia. You can see there's just a couple hours of windows, uh, maybe, for uh, uh, Japan and Asia on uh, 17, 15, maybe as high as 12 and 10 meters, but not very much. But there's a very short window for, uh, for Asia. So we're going to try and take advantage of it. And anybody else in the world, Europe and, and the U.S., North America, South America, would really greatly appreciate if you'd stand by while we take advantage of that uh, window. And we're going to have the usual uh, uh, frequencies. The only thing I might mention is on FT8 on 60 meters, we might move to channel one or two uh, to accommodate some of the Europeans who can't operate uh, on 53, 57. And we're probably going to participate in the worldwide uh, prefix contest in the sideband part. Um, we don't know what uh, category we'll be entering, probably multi two, but uh, we're not sure yet. We'll see. And for a bonus, you know, Sable Island National Park Preserve counts uh, for POTA. Also, uh, we'll, we're right near a lighthouse uh, for the Lighthouse Award. Uh, it's NIOTA and also uh, Grid FM 93. And after you work us, you know, we're going to have at least uh, daily club log uploads. And depending on how active the internet is there, uh, how robust it is. We might try live stream. Again, that's a big maybe. But there's going to be OQRS after we're done. You can QSL direct the WA4DAN, and soon afterwards we'll upload to LOTW. And any log questions during the operation can go to K5DHY. This is on our website, which is uh, CY0S.com. And we have some special friends on Sable. There's a lot of horses uh, that were... Um, from a shipwreck a couple hundred years ago. Currently, the population of these ponies is about 400 to 450 or so. And sometimes they might want to pull down our antennas, but no, nah, we're just kidding. But uh, there's a lot of these ponies. We're forbidden to get close to them or, or interact with them. Um, and uh, we have some limits. There's a perimeter around the compound that we can't go outside of. So uh, we can't explore the island like uh, we would if we uh, if we really wanted to. There's a lot of freshwater ponds where they get their drinking water from. And you, sometimes the beaches are full of seals, uh, so you've got to watch. And sometimes they have to drive the seals off of the runway so the airplane can land. And, you know, there are all these shipwrecks, you know, hundreds of shipwrecks. Uh, Sable is called the, the graveyard of the Atlantic. And a couple years, a couple hundred years ago, there was um, a ship that uh, ran aground and there was one survivor. It was a lady, and her name was Mrs. Copeland. And um, she was um, found barely alive by someone who had been shipwrecked there before, I guess. And uh, later, she was found uh, murdered. And they say that her ghost is still around. And um, 
every now and then, um, well, first of all, she, she had a lot of uh, very expensive jewelry on her. And one of the, she had this incredibly valuable uh, ring on her finger that um, it, it wouldn't come off. So whoever robbed her cut her finger off uh, to, to take the ring. And every now and then on a dark stormy night, um, you'll see this hand, uh, the ghost of Mrs. Copeland out one of your windows. So anyway, that's, uh, that's a story of uh, Sable Island. And we have a lot of sponsors. And Tim, we really thank DX Engineering for all the support you've given us for helping us with antennas and coax and connectors and things. It's really appreciated. And we really appreciate NCDXF and Indexa for uh, their major uh, support to us too. So do you have any questions? Yeah, if you have questions, just put them in the uh, in the chat, and uh, we'll get your questions to Glenn. And uh, Glenn, that it, uh, it's it's very exciting. I mean, the the whole thing. You've not been to Sable in the past, though, right? I have I have not been to Sable. Uh, I it seems like I have for all the research I've done, looking at it, and all the videos. You you know, that I, there's a real funny video about that Mrs. Copeland. It's a 1950s video in black and white. But it's uh, it's really humorous to uh, this guy goes to the island on a ship and he's dressed in a suit, you know, just and, and remember the guys, uh, you know, years ago on de-expeditions, they would wear coats and ties on de-expeditions, you know, um, who does that these days? I mean, you know, nobody does that. How, how about the equipment they used to lug around in Africa? You know, the, <laughs> the, two, the camera you know, the big, big, Yeah, uh, you know, the, the Colin stuff was nice and small compared to some of the big helicopters rigs and stuff like that. You know, this is going to be like, um, for us, like Desicheo and Navasa, because it's it's probably going to be better because we're half, literally halfway between Europe and North America. And I think our pileups are going to be just endless 24 hours a day on all the bands. So our biggest problem is going to be finding the bands that will give us the most productivity and, and provide, you know, an all-time new one for those in the hard-to-reach areas. Now, Glenn, you mentioned something at the start of your presentation that uh, CY9 is uh, kind of off limits now? Um, the the big island that you saw is off limits because that's a, a bird preserve, but the only one that is not off limits is that little island where the helicopter was. Okay. That, so that that is still okay, but uh, uh, the, the big island is no longer available for hams without some arm twisting or something, you know. But... Yeah, well, that... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll have to see. And it, Glenn, it goes without saying that if you or any of the other members of the team come across something that, that you need uh, from DX Engineering that you don't already have, uh, we'd be happy to supply it even, uh, you know, last minute. So no no troubles there. Uh, well, we might take you up on that because I'm, I'm driving. I'm leaving uh, early on the 16th of March and I'm going to pick up Jay. Uh, K4ZLE, and we're going to be driving right past your, your store, so we just might stop in for some last-minute needs. Yeah, you just uh, stop in and, and load up and um, let Terry know you're coming, and she'll take good care of you. Uh, let's see here. What is the method of time sync that you'll use on FT8, and will a donation be required for LOTW? Well, of course, any donation is always welcome, uh, but... Um, there is internet on the island, and if it's robust enough, we'll use internet uh, time. But uh, we also have uh, a GPS and uh, a Raspberry Pi, um, a GPS puck and Raspberry Pi, you know, for time syncing. Okay, good. And uh, uh, Bernie, W3UR, asked a question, but I'm just not quite sure. Used to do that during contest portable. Um, not not sure exactly what uh, Bernie means there. Do, um, Glenn, uh, uh, <clears throat> let's let's talk about uh, this team uh, of eight guys. I mean, just th there's uh, hundreds of years of experience here. Yeah, and we're getting old too, you know. So it adds up pretty fast. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we got we we have. We, I think we have a really good team that uh, I think we're going to, you know, if, and if the sunspots hold up like they have here in the last few weeks and uh, the way the prediction is here in this, uh, you know, as the sun comes around, you know, we're, you know, we're going to be in this cycle we are right now. We should have some unbelievable propagation and, and we, all of us uh, 
uh, should be able to really, uh, uh, you know, make this a really high Q count uh, de expedition. Well, and it comes ar uh, around at a good time of the year, actually. I know it, it's a little dicey for weather for you up there, but, you know, uh, you know, from the standpoint of the people that want to work you, uh, the end of March, it, I mean, it's just the start of, of spring. So this, this would really be good. And, and I, I like your chances for some uh, good propagation on six meters. Well, yeah, we'll be at the very start, maybe a little early of the E season. And uh, um, I, I hope that works and even into, into Europe. And, you know, looking at right now uh, at the six meter uh, um, map, you know, there's been a lot of wild stuff going on on six meters. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's going to be uh, exciting to see that. Um, will you have any sort of real time regular update to the log? Uh, Marco, yeah, Glenn talked about that. It just just depends upon the Internet and uh, how busy the crew is. It, it depends on how robust you know, we're going to have at least daily uploads to Club Log and if if the internet is robust enough, um, well, we might even try a live stream like uh, the TN8K guys did. That was really helpful to see where we are and and you know to see your call sign come up a couple minutes later. I mean, it really uh, eliminates uh, a lot of the pileups. I just hope we don't have a lot of the DQRM that the the poor guys in Bouvet had. You know that that was really that literally brought tears to my eyes because they were struggling. They had low power. Uh, marginal antennas, uh, weak signals, you know, long path, and they would try three and four, five, six times, you know, to complete a queue, and sometimes they would give up just because on this end, um, the DXers couldn't copy because of the deliberate QRM. So I, I hope we don't have much of that, but that that really broke my heart, and I hope that goes away. Uh, Glenn, is there a place to make a donation for the expedition? Yes, our website, uh, cy0s.com. cy0s.com. Good, 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 good. Well, everybody is certainly wishing you well. Um, at DX Engineering, we're very proud to be a part uh, of the uh, sponsor teams. And uh, we certainly wish you a safe de expedition and a safe return. And uh, hope your shoulder heals up and. and <laughs> um, but um, you happen to know a, a good orthopedic guy, <laughs> so. Yeah, well, it's hard being on the other end of the scalpel, I tell you. It's, you know, I've, like I said, I've done thousands of these myself, but I've never had one done to me. And it's, you know, well, I'll make it. <laughs> and we'll look forward to having your beard back as well. <laughs> well, Glenn, thanks very much for coming today. Any last words before we sign off? No, we just hope to see everybody in the log, and we're going to do our best to get everybody in the log. And we really appreciate uh, DX Engineering's help with uh, logistics and everything, Tim. You don't know how much that uh, means to us, DX Expeditioners. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's our pleasure, and 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 it's in our DNA. It's what we do, and uh, we're going to keep on doing it. Glenn, thanks so much. Have a great weekend and a safe trip, and uh, hopefully you stop at the store. I'll make plans to uh, be over there as well. Until. Next Tuesday, next Tuesday, we're going to have another special guest. We've got, uh, we're going to be talking Hamvention Awards for 2023. So you don't want to miss next Tuesday. It's going to be a great show. And uh, until then, you know, get on the radio, have some fun in the uh, CQ 160 meter sideband contest this weekend. Get on the air, have fun, and uh, say hello to the world. Until yep. Tuesday, 73 from DX Engineering. 73s. <laughs>